Our presentation today is highlighting the hidden power of animation in Form Z7. What can you animate? Well, you can animate views, objects, lights, materials, just about anything that you want. And it should be mentioned that all these animation features come standard with Form Z, so you don't need to add any special plugin to take advantage of these powerful tools. Here's a few of the animation features we'll be looking at in this presentation today. We'll take a brief look at the new Sun Animation Palette, which not only lets you interactively adjust the sun position, it also lets you easily export your sun animation to an animated movie by just clicking the Export button. And we'll see how easy it is to use this in just a few moments. We'll also take a look at object animation. In this scene, we animated the transparency of the solar panels. The support frame objects are animated bending along a path. The sun position is animated throughout the day and the solar panels are animated by rotating them to follow the direction of the sun. This entire animated sequence was created and rendered completely in Form Z as a single rendering pass. I just clicked the Generate Animation button and the movie was created and ready to show. We'll also take a look at animating cameras, so you can easily create flyby, walkthrough animations of your design. One technique is to save a series of views and let Form Z automatically create an animation through those views. Another technique is to create the path yourself and tell Form Z to have the camera follow that path. We'll take a look at both methods in just a few moments. You can also integrate your animations into a background image and have shadows and reflections automatically interact in this environment. This is just another way to better visualize your design by placing it in the proper context of its environment. Form Z animation can be used for more than just visualizing your project. You can also use it to build and create 3D form. This is achieved by manipulating or playing with your animation parameters to explore an infinite array of design possibilities. And since you can animate almost any parameter of any modeling tool, this ultimately extends the modeling capabilities of any tool beyond its default static parameters. And we will definitely have some fun with this today. And speaking of modeling with animation, you can also extract objects from an animated object. For example, here we have a simple cylindrical object with some animated deformations applied to it. You can extract the resulting animated object at a specified interval and Form Z automatically creates new objects. You can then either use the derived objects as they are or combine them together to develop a more complex form. We'll take a brief look at this today also. Let's launch Form Z and take a live look at some of these animation features. We'll be looking at a variety of different projects to help us explore ways that animation can be used as an integral part of your design workflow. Our first project is this urban development plan where we will do some conceptual massing of a new high-rise building to be placed in the center of this plaza. This introduces us to our first animation feature in Form Z7, which is animating the sun. One way to animate the sun is through the use of the sun position palette. And I have the sun position palette open right over here. And how this works is we can slide the slider to change the time of day. And you see it's dynamically, interactively modifying the sun position throughout the day. I can also type in any time throughout the day if I want also. There's also a slider for the day of the year. So if I move that back and forth, you can see I can actually choose any day of the year, either by sliding the slider or use the pull down menu items to choose any day. You can also choose any city in any part of the world and it automatically positions that sunlight for you. Now it should be mentioned that these are automatically animated for you. So if I just click the play button in the sun position palette, you can see that that sun position is automatically animating through a actual sequence, either through the, the time of day or days throughout the year. Now if we want to export that out and show it to someone else, what we can do then is use the export button. When we click on that, we set our settings for the type of rendering, uh, the name of the file, we click the generate animation button, and we end up with a QuickTime movie or a Windows AVI file that we can then show to someone else. Let's start creating a massing model for the building here in the center plaza. We'll do that using the modeling tools. We'll zoom in just a little bit here, maybe select the rectangle drawing tool, extrude up a rectangle to create a solid box for to begin our massing model there. And you can see that the shadows and lighting is live and interactive as we can manipulate the sun position palette in real time within our urban surrounding environment. 
Now to further sculpt that rectangular box that we have there, we can use the reshaping tools. These are my favorite tools and these are covered in other presentations, but we'll just quickly use those for just a moment here to give us something a little more interesting than just a simple box. So we'll offset a segment that gets inserted into the face. Use the reshape tool. I can reshape any face inward or outward to add or subtract volume. And let's add another segment over here. Offset that, reshape that down a little bit and just have some fun and sculpt a more interesting shape. We can also use our transformation tools if I select the move tool. I can select any segment on the object, move that up and down. You can move points, segments, faces, whatever you want. Hold on the command can Mac or the control can Windows. And like I said, this is covered in other modeling presentations and we'll be getting into the animation stuff in just a moment. But here you can use the reshaping tools to quickly sculpt a conceptual shape. Now what we'll do is use the animation tools to further refine this massing model that we have and add some animation to that to sort of articulate that into a more complex form. To use the animation tools we'll actually switch over to the rendering and animation workspace. Right now in the upper right hand corner you see that we're in the modeling workspace where we have primarily just the modeling tools. So if I click on the rendering and animation workspace then we're still in our project but now we have just the tools we need for rendering and animating our project. With that uh, let's make a few copies of this because we'll sort of compare and contrast different effects that we're applying to our objects. So we'll use the move tool again and make a few copies of our building and try some different animation techniques on these different buildings that are that are there. Let's uh, bring out the deform animation palette and let's try a taper animation. Just simply click on the object and it's automatically animated for you. I didn't have to set anything and you can see that if I go to the animation timeline down there at the bottom and if I scrub that timeline over time you can see that it's automatically animating the object with some default parameters. Where are these default parameters coming from? Well just like the modeling tools if you look in the tool options palette here's all the parameters for that tool that's applied to the object. So you can see it was preset to a five second animation. Now these are all defaults here. It's a five second animation. The starting parameters are zero percent tapering in the top and bottom of the object. At the end, when I click the end tab, you can see these are the end parameters that it's going to animate to. So you can see that the lower taper factor is minus 100%, so it's going inward. Let's change that to zero. You can see as I change the numbers, it's automatically updating the actual object in the modeling window. So let's set the other lower tapering in the X direction to zero. So there's no taper in the bottom. And for the top, instead of going 100% outward, I'm going to go minus 50%, meaning it's going to go inward. And as I change that, it's updating that geometry in real time. Now, I can actually position this animation at any point in time. So here's that time equals zero. We have the original object. And as I move the timeline, you can see that it's interpolating into the second set of parameters, which is 50% tapering inward in both directions and that's how easy it is to animate objects in Form Z. Let's try another one just for fun. Let's use the animation bulge. Click on the object and you can see it's automatically applied some bulging animation to that. And you can see we can change the parameters for that also. It's a five second animation. It's starting at zero and it's ending at 100% bulging in the X and Y direction. Let's change those numbers. Let's go minus 50% in the Y and now we're going inward that way. And let's go minus 50% in the X. And there we go. So now scrub that timeline. There's the original object. And then as I move over time, I can actually stop anywhere along that timeline sequence and get a variable type of bulging type deformation on that object. Let's do one more just for fun. Let's do a twist. And you click on the object and you can see you know there's default parameters for that too. Uh, I would like to mention that any of these animated deformations that you're applying to the object, uh, you can apply it as either a faceted deformation to the object, meaning as I scrub the timeline and set my parameters, you can see that it's automatically updating that deformed object as a faceted or polygonal type object. And you can also choose the smooth option. So if you want smooth, mathematically smooth geometry, uh, you can choose that option and you can see it'll actually generate it smooth and that can be converted to nerves and things like that. So you have the best of both worlds of being able to choose the type of personality that you want for your geometry. I would also like to mention that instead of changing the parameters as soon as you apply the object, you can also edit parameters in the animation editor palette. So let's see how that works. Let's go to the palettes pull down menu, open up the animation editor palette, and you can see we can graphically look at the animation information that is assigned to our objects. Now we have the visibility option turned on, so we're seeing a lot of graphs here. So let's turn the visibility off for all the animation tracks. And I'm gonna go just to the twist animation 
and here's all the animation tracks that are associated with that twist and our object is listed inside of there so all this animation track information is assigned to that object you can drag and drop other objects in there if you want also I'm gonna turn on the upper angle track and you can see we have a graphical representation for that and you can see at time equals zero uh, it was set to be zero um, degrees and as we move the timeline it interpolates to a second keyframe position and that is at five seconds it's going to be 45 degrees and you can see I can change that graphically by just sort of dragging and uh, modifying that to increase or decrease the angle by graphically manipulating the animation tracks and it's automatically updating right there in the modeling window so it's pretty fun to be able to change those parameters right on the fly like that Right. I would also like to show that you can actually combine these animations together. So for example, uh, we can get rid of this twist object and you can see it's removed from the twist animation, but you can see that animation track information is still there and I can drag and drop other objects in there if I want. I'm going to um, delete the bulge object and all we have left is just the object that's inside the taper type animation. So what I'm going to do is take that animation with that object in there and I'm going to drop it into the bulge. Now we're tapering and bulging the object. I take that and drop it into the twist. Now, if I move the timeline, you can see that we're actually tapering, bulging, and twisting the object at the same time. And of course, we can open up any of the graphical information uh, to be able to further modify any of the animation tracks for any of those parameters inside of the animation editor palette and come up with an infinite array of different types of 3D forms uh, by just manipulating those animation parameters. Let's move on to another project to highlight some of the other ways that animation can be used as an integral part of our design process. For example, here we have this solar panel canopy. And of course, an instrumental thing with the solar panels is the sun position. So of course, we saw that in the previous project that you can animate the sun and be able to control the direction of that sun, which is important for solar panels. But another thing that we animated with this project was the actual solar panels themselves. So you can see if I scrub the timeline, you can see that the solar panels are actually rotating throughout the day. So in the morning, they're facing the sun as it comes up at sunrise, and then at the middle of the day, they're rotated to face straight up in the middle of the day, and towards the end of the day, they gradually rotate so that they're facing the sun as it sets to get maximum efficiency from that sun light that's coming in. So let's see how easy it is to be able to animate objects using keyframe animation in Form Z. What we'll do is zoom in a little closer here and what we're going to do is turn on just a single panel by itself. Now this is a panel that is not animated yet so let's go through the process and see what it takes to animate this thing. Uh, first thing we're going to do is take the animation timeline and we want to tell it where, where we want that object to be a at a certain point in time. So I'll move that all the way to time equals zero seconds. I mean, you can put it wherever you want. At this point, we're going to start it at time equals zero. And we need to move that panel where we want it to be at that point in time. So I can use the move, rotate, scale tools, whatever I want. I'm just going to sort of position that object. So let's rotate that a little bit forward like that. And we have it positioned where we want it to start. Now, it's not animated yet. In order to animate it, what you need to do is use the keyframe animate tool. And so you select the keyframe animate click on the object and that becomes an animatable or animated object and we just keyframe that position in time so now what we need to do is actually tell it where we want that to be at some other point in time so I'll take the timeline down here and I'll actually scrub that to some other point in time let's go to time equals uh, 10 seconds and then where do we want it to be at that point in time well let's use the transformation tools again and I'll maybe rotate that the other direction so let's take this thing and rotate it a little bit this way and place it right about there so in the end of the day it's facing towards the other end of the sky and then we'll click on the keyframe tool click on the object and we keyframed it so we told it where we want it to be at that point in time now you can see if I were to scrub that timeline back it's automatically interpolating itself through those two keyframe positions so if I click the play button uh, you can see that I just gave it the start and end position and it'll automatically figure out how to get to that end position by itself and that's how easy it is to animate in Form Z you don't have to animate each frame by itself you just give it keyframe positions and have it interpolate for you Right. Let's look at some other ways that animation was used as an integral part uh, of this um, design project. We're going to zoom on a little bit here. And we've also used some animation to explore different shapes and 3D forms. So for example, we started off with a 2D 
rectangular shape, and then we want to sort of sculpt that into a more organic form, which will represent the form in which we're going to lay the solar panels on. Now, of course, there's all sorts of modeling tools, NURBS modeling and organic modeling tools to create the form directly, or I tried some of the animation tools to explore some 3D shapes. For example, I used the linear wave deformation tool. I just clicked on the object and it applies a linear wave type deformation to the object. And as I scrub the timeline, you can see that we get uh, some changing parameters which ch are changing that linear wave deformation on the object. And you can see just like all the other modeling tools and all the other animation tools that we looked at uh, in the tool options palette, we're in this result buffer mode. So we can modify any of these parameters. So you can see it's a five second animation. It starts with this height and width of the wave and the angle of the wave is zero. We end with the same parameters except for the angle is rotated 45 degrees. So you can see it's changing over time. The wave is actually rotating over time. So let's change that from 45 to 90. Let's make it rotate even more. And now you can see we start at time equals zero in the timeline. And as I drag that timeline, you can see that that wave is actually rotating over time. And I can stop anywhere along that timeline sequence and just sort of look at that form and get some interesting shapes from that. There we go. It's something like that, maybe. Maybe that might look for look like a good way to lay out our solar panels on there. All right. Let's undo that. Let's try another one. Let's do a circular wave deformation on the object. I click on it, and you can see that the circular wave is being generated uh, from the center of that object. And really, it's not going from the center. It's going from the internal object's axis. And that's something that's very important to know is the fact that a lot of these animation tools and features work off the internal object's XYZ axis. Each object has its own XYZ axis. And you can see the sine wave is, origi is originating from that object's axis. So what if we want to move that somewhere else? Well, if we undo, go back, and I'm going to use the Edit Object Axis tool, which is actually in the Modeling Tool workspace, but I've added it to my Favorites panel here. Just hit the space bar to get the Favorites panel. And I can use the Edit Object Axis tool on the object. And you can see we get this little marquee that I can move around and place that axis anywhere that I want on that object. So let's place it over here in the, in the corner. So now if I apply a, an animation to that, for example, the circular wave, uh, you can see that that wave is actually originating from that object's axis. And that's how we can control that. Now let's just change one other parameter here. You can see that the starting with a certain height and width for the wave. And let's take the end parameters. Let's end with the wave being a bit longer. So instead of 16 feet, let's make it 30 feet over 5 seconds. So now you can see it starts off with a 16-foot wave. Then over time, as I move the timeline, you can see the wave's getting longer and longer. It gets to like 30 feet. And we can just sort of you know stop anywhere along the line in that timeline sequence and just sort of observe the form and maybe come up with some interesting shape that we wouldn't have come up otherwise uh, without using the animation. Once again, this is a faceted object. We can go in and choose and choose the smooth option, which makes that a smooth mathematical surface. We can convert that to NURBS, move the controls, blend it, and attach it with other surfaces. This is an object that's just like any other object inside of Form Z. All right. With that, um, let's look at some other things that we can do with animation. Uh, for example, let's go to the structural type elements that were used, or the framing members that were used to support the solar panels up on top. And so let's see how easily we could go ahead and create some of the framing structures here. Well, actually, what we did is we started off with the surface that we derived either, th either through modeling or through our animation tools. We end up with some kind of 3D form. And from that form, we're going to um, derive paths from that existing form that we already have there. So let's switch over to our modeling workspace again for just a moment. And we're going to use our derivative tools, which lets us derive lines and faces and objects from existing objects. So we're going to derive a segment from that edge there. And now we have a mathematical spline which matches the edge of that surface exactly. And there's all sorts of curve editing tools that we can use to further edit that. I'm not going to get into those here, uh, but I just want to quickly at least adjust it a little bit so that the curve is actually extending down to the ground because that's going to be the path for our uh, front structural framing member. And we want that to come all the way down to the ground here. So I'm going to stretch that curve down there, something like that. And there, we have a nice little wireframe path that's going to represent that structural element in the front. Now, that's just a wire. We need to give that some kind of thickness. And of course, one option that we can do is to draw a 2D profile cross-section, a square or a circle or something like that, and have it sweep along the path. But we're going to do something different. What I'm going to do is create uh, my piece of tubing here and give it a radius. 
and extend that to some height. And I'm not too concerned about the height. I'm just going to randomly make it some height because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the bend along path tool in order to take that object and bend it along this wire path that I derived from that surface. So all you have to do is click on your object, click on your path, and the object bends along that path. And you can see there's all sorts of parameters in the tool options over here to control those bending parameters. And you can see uh, one of the parameters is how far it bends along that path. So I can go from 0 to 100% for the end of it. And it's updating live right there in the modeling window. Or I can actually control where that object starts to bend along the path. So if I move that start position further along the path, I can change that. So there's plenty of parameters here that we can modify. Now up to this point, we're looking at just a modeling tool to be able to create our structural elements. We just create a piece of tubing and it bends along all of our derived paths. But you also notice that there's some red dots here. And what do these red dots mean? That means that that's an animatable parameter. That's a parameter that can change over time. The red dot means that it's not animated yet, but if I click on the red dot, it becomes an animatable parameter that, that'll change. So let's see how this process works. First thing I'm going to do is go to my timeline down here at the bottom, and I'm going to set my time. So let's uh, rewind this all the way to time equals zero. So at this point, I'm going to pick my object, and go into the parameters tab and the tool options here and I'm going to look at the ending percentage and I'm going to take that and drag it all the way to the left so you can see that that tube is actually bending only 0.1 percent along the path so that's that little object down there and if I want this to change over time then I click on the red dot say add track and now that's an animated parameter you can see now it's a green dot meaning it's now animated and the key is representing the fact that at this point in time this is a keyframe position for it all right. Now we want that to change over time, right? So let's change our time position. So let's take our animation timeline, maybe wind it to the very end. Time equals 10 seconds, or you can make the animation any length that you want, but I'm just going to set it to um, 10 seconds here. And then I'm going to pick my object again, and then look at the parameters of that object. And you can see that if I were to change that value, and when we slide that all the way to the right, you can see that it automatically changes that to a keyframe parameter. So uh, it changes it to a green dot that has a key next to it. It's at 100%. And now it's automatically animated. We have the beginning and end parameters. So if I were to wind this all the way back to time equals zero and play this back, you can see that it starts at 0.1%. And then in 10 seconds, it'll go all the way to the very end. And this is generating an object at every interval spacing along that animated sequence. And it is a true solid object. And you can stop that anywhere at any time uh, and use that just like any other object that's in your project. And that's how we end up with the final animated framing members that we have that look something like this. And you can see that uh, an important aspect here is that we use the bend along path tool in order to create the framing members and then later on if we want to add animation we can just animate the parameters afterwards so you don't have to create a separate model or anything to do the animation sequences like we see them here. Next, we're going to animate the metro train coming down the tracks. To accomplish this, we're going to use the animation group tool. So we can actually combine multiple objects together into a single group, which is represented by the animation object axis right here. So all we have to do is animate that group axis, and whatever the axis does, all the objects in that group will follow along with that. So with that, let's zoom out just a little bit, and I'm going to select the animate along path tool. And if I were to select that animation group axis, and click on the path, you can see that that animation axis then follows that path. And inside of the tool options, we can also control the velocity. So we can set that to be miles per hour. Maybe type in 35 miles per hour if we want. And you can see we can control the velocity that way. We can also control the velocity using the animation editor palette. So if I were to bring that up, we can see that there's a curve representing the velocity or how fast that animation group axis is going along that path. So you can see at time equals zero, it's at the zero percent along the path, and then by the time time equals 10 seconds, as I scrub that timeline, you can see it ends up to be 100 percent along that path. Now to change the constant linear velocity that's there, I can just change the graph itself, and that'll modify the velocity of how fast that object goes along that path. We can even insert additional keyframes if we want. There's this little icon right here which allows us to insert a keyframe anywhere, move that anywhere that we want to control the time and 
percentage along the path. And if we were to flatten that curve out, you'll see that we can actually take that velocity curve and flatten it so that the velocity becomes zero. So it can actually stop at the station uh, right at that point in time. So now you can see, if I were to play this back, and as we go along, it's going at a constant velocity here. And then right towards the middle, uh, you can see that the velocity curve flattens out. Time is still continuing on, but you can see the train pretty much stops at that station. And then as time continues on, the velocity curve ramps back up, so the train can then leave the station. And that's how easy it is to control the velocity information and control objects that are animated along a path. Next, we're going to create some flyby walkthrough type animations in Form Z7. Now, there's many different ways of doing that. Uh, we'll look at probably the two most common ways that this is done. Uh, the first a technique that we'll use is to automatically animate through a series of pre-saved views. If you look in the views palette over here on the right, you can see that I've already saved three different views. Uh, if you click on the plus green button there, whatever your view is on the screen, it'll save it and add it to that list. Now if I want to make that view active, I click in the first column, give it a red dot, and there's view number one. Click in the view number two, make that active, and there's view number three. And now what we want to do is create an animated sequence through those three views that I have saved. So I'll click on the third column, which is the eyeball there, and that'll make that view a visible symbol inside of my modeling window. And there's our three visible views. And then I will select those in the proper order because it's going to create an animation in the order that I pick those views. So I'm going to select this view first, and then you always know, hold the shift key down for multi-pick, and I'm going to click on that view second, and I'm going to select that view third. And then I'm going to use the Animate Entities tool, and this will animate any selected objects that you have. And with the Animate Entities tool active, I click a blank area, and it'll give me a dialog with all sorts of parameters to control how it's going to animate through those pre-selected items. I'm going to leave everything at defaults, but you can see here you can have it animate at a constant velocity and give it overall time and things like that. I'm just going to click the OK button, and you can see that it automatically animated that view for me. Now, in a sense, what really happened is that it created a brand new view for me. If you look in the Views palette, you can see there's a new view that's there. So I'm going to make the other three original views invisible so we can't see those. And if I were to scrub that timeline, you'll see that that new view that was created is also following that spline that was automatically created for me. And all that was done by the Animate Entities tool. Now that spline path that's created for that animation sequence is just the normal spline curve, just like any other curve in Form Z. If we want to modify that path, we can do that. Simply right click and show controls, and we can move those controls around to further modify that. And Notice that as I move those controls and reshape that spline curve path, you can see that that view will always follow wherever the path goes. So that's how easy it is to make some quick changes to the path. Now, if we want to see what the camera sees, uh, we need to make that view active. So if I go into the Views palette, I click in the first column, put a red dot next to that new view that was created, and now I'm looking and seeing what that camera sees. So if I click the Play button, now you can see that we have that animated sequence going along that path that was created using the Animate Entities tool. All right, let's look at a second way that we can create animation flyby and walkthroughs, and that's where we create the path ourselves. So let's zoom out just a little bit here. And I'm going to delete that path that was created for us. And let's turn off this other view. All right. And it just so happens that I've already created a path for us. So I went in and created a spline curve. I drew it on the, on the platform here and just sort of moved it up a few feet. And there we have a curve that's sort of meandering through our station. And then we can have a camera or a view follow that path. So let's turn on any of these views, uh, maybe view number two, make that visible. And then using the Animate Along Path tool, I will select that view, I'll click on the path, and that camera now follows that path. And of course, you can animate objects along the path like you did with the train, or in this case, we're actually animating a camera along that path. So if we make that the active view, and then we click the Play button, you can see we're actually following that path through that station. And if we want to change that path, just edit that curve that you created, and you can modify where that camera goes through your scene. And it's just that easy. And I would like to end this presentation with just one more sample project to highlight one of the other ways that we can use animation to build 3D form.
If you were to look at this object that we have here, most people would think maybe we use some NURBS modeling or some kind of organic modeling tools, and I'm sure you could build it using those, but in this case, we've actually built this using the animation features in ForumZ. Let's see how this was done. We started off by creating a cylindrical type object, and then we applied some animated type deformations to that. Just like we did with the original massing bot model at the very beginning, we applied some radial bend deformations, some bulging deformations, and some taper deformations to that over time. Now once we have our animated object done, we can actually extract or create objects from that animated sequence. And that's done using the Extract Animation tool. With the Extract Animation tool, the default setting is one second. So if I were to click on the object, you can see that it'll extract a brand new object every one second. And so these are new objects that are there. I still have my animated object there but it created a series of new objects for me. If I were to undo, let's create more objects at a lower specified interval. So maybe instead of one second, let's give it one half second. So I click on my animated object, and now it's gonna generate an object for me every half second to, uh, for that animated interval. And we end up with all these objects that look like this. I can apply a gold type material to those, and then we can render that out, and we end up with our final rendered image that looks like that. So that's just another fun way that we can use the animation capabilities within ForMZ for creating 3D form. Before I end this presentation, I would like to quickly mention that ForMZ supports the ArchVision RPC plugin, which is a great resource for easily adding static and animated entourage items to your scene, such as trees, people, cars, moving water fountains, and walking people. The RPC content libraries literally contain tens of thousands of items that you can just drag and drop into your scene. And this concludes the ForMZ7 animation presentation.